Well, so let's do the discussions this morning. And um, my guest in the studio is Adam Mutawakilu. He's a member of parliament for Damango. Uh, first time on the show this year. Uh, uh, I have to say a very good morning to you, sir. That Thank is, you. Um, well, uh, for the new parliament. Thank yes, you. first time Thank that you're you. here. Well, well. And um, he's also the deputy uh, ranking member for the Mines and Energy Committee. And uh, we, we have to start with the discussions and appropriately. L let me just uh, ask you, you on the subject of um, the free SHS uh, as announced by the president over yeah. the weekend. We know it's something they campaigned on, but now announcing the components uh, as to which of them will be free, etc. What you make of it? Yeah, thank you very much. And good morning to our cherished viewers and more especially the good people of the Mango constituency. This uh, free SHS has been on the table since 2008. They have promised when they come, they will make SHS free. And uh, last year, the last two years, the president in his State of the Nation address also indicated in fulfillment of the Constitution, uh, free education will start progressively. Mm -hmm. And as at we speak, they had implemented it to some level. So it's good. They had indicated that they would uh, make it free and it's welcome. And it will be in fulfillment of the Constitution. The issues that will arise for me is one, prompt release of funds mm -hmm. because. The schools depend so much on those items to be able to survive. So prompt release will lead to quality education. If it is not released promptly, it will affect the quality of education. Two, access should still continue. The president has, uh, the former president, Mama, former president, Mama, started with these 200 SHS. One 123 uh, completed and at the various stages of completion. And the President Anna Kufado, by then, the flag bearer indicated clearly that when he comes, he will continue with whatever project NDC government had left behind. So we hope that while the free SHS is ongoing, he will continue to complete the remaining 77 such that because access is very important. If you make it free and only few people who had the opportunity to be in SHS benefit, however, there are many more who would have taken advantage if the facilities were there. So you realize that while you are, you are, you are making it free here, you are denying a lot from having access to uh, further education. And you know that education is the bedrock or bad boom, backbone of every country. So monitor it is something the president, pres former president Mama started with. He's coming to continue and complete it. And we'll monitor. And as and when there is the need, we'll let them know that uh, one, two, three need to be done to make it a success. Okay, so let's move on to the substantive discussions. Uh, we know that from over the weekend, there were reports of uh, some clashes in Bimbila, yeah. and that resulted in a curfew being imposed. Uh, now, uh, we're told that the death toll may have arisen to um, just over 10. So we have about 11 people dying from the incident, and even though that, those are just the formal the former figures from the police. Uh, we were told one or two others may have been buried without being recourse to the police uh, as far as this is concerned. But wh what do you make of um, perhaps the, the break in the peace and tranquility of Bimbila? Because we thought... Uh, yeah, we in to... my view, I think this needed not to have happened. And before I start, I want to extend my condolences to the brief families because it was boiling to the point that the security went to the regent and advised him to change the time. First, they asked him to stop, and he wanted concrete reasons why he should stop, and they couldn't provide it. And as a result, they changed the time instead of in the evening to the afternoon. That is a clear indication that they had picked some intelligence on the ground. 
and I had thought the security would have intensified patrols and other things to ensure that this didn't happen. But unfortunately, they have done their best to keep it. But I think we could have prevented it. But the sad news is the killing of women and children. In our tradition, where you're going to say it, where you do say it, women and children are not part. It's for men to men. For them to resort to killing of women and children is very, very unfortunate. Very, very, very unfortunate. And this is the first time uh, I've heard people targeting women and children instead of their colleagues. And I, I like the prompt action of the Minister of Interior. And as I speak, he's in uh, the living for. Uh, Bimbila to get. Yes, we're told first, that you'll be going with the IJP, uh, yes. David Asantia PH. Yeah, first hand information. And that is very, very important. I commend him for that. And I hope that when he gets hand, first hand information, he will bet, un, better understand what has happened there and be able to predict what he should do to be able to ensure peace and tranquility in the traditional area. And I want to want to take this to urge the Supreme Court to fast track the ruling in respect of the chieftaincy dispute there. Because I think that will go a long way to finally settle the matter and therefore bring about legitimacy to the throne. I believe that that will help a lot. Why is chieftaincy a very thorny issue? Um, a countrywide issue, so to speak, but uh, of course it's m more tony in some of the communities in, in the three northern regions, but very also very tony issue. We have Chito, Alavanyu, and sometimes you, you have it also down south as well. Yes, uh, it is something that uh, I cannot be in a better position to analyze, but it relates to tradition and us you are aware the transition and culture of the people is the lifeline and the blood of the people. When you, you lose your tradition, then you're a foreigner in your own land. And people want to ensure that the tradition remain. However, we have not legislated enough and also respect the various structures to ensure that the processes in getting a chief is properly followed. And sometimes, even if it is legislated, the, there's the possibility to sideline those legislation and therefore goes with your wish. And that is one of the critical issues that we are facing now. Because if it is properly legislated and respected, I don't think we'll have uh, these issues. And respect for every person and the role. If you have the kingmakers, please, as a king or chief, you respect the decision of the kingmakers. Because the moment they settle on somebody, and you feel you are the chief, and therefore you can decide whoever you want, it will definitely generate problems. And it depends. Some use regents, in our case, in Gonjaland. Regions don't play much of a significant role. Yes, so it depends. But at the end, I believe that we should uh, uh, find it proper to respect the various uh, decisions from kingmakers in order to have peace. Without peace, no development. And no chief will be happy to rule over his people where development is so deprived the burden on the chief will be so high. And you can only get development when there's peace and tranquility in the area. And therefore, I want to urge all traditional authorities to ensure that peace prevail in their environs. And also to the educated. Yes, some of the educated take advantage of the literacy level to ma. Uh, the peace in the area because of their selfish interests. It could be political, it could be traditional, or any other. District. So it is also a very key that Why the, should the it more, be political? The more elites could go in a direction to create confusion. Mm. And, but it mostly happens 
during election or before elections. Oh, the after post election, election post election, there's no in it. There's no for anybody. Unless when you make promises to those people in the course of the elections, and they want to, they want their returns for supporting you, that could also create. And the third one is creating the avenue for employment by government. I believe that if most of these youth were uh, engaged, and every morning they have to go to uh, work, they won't have so much time to sit down and plan. And in our area, this is the dry season. Soon by April, May, farming season gets in and they can be busy. But most of the youth need jobs. And I want to add that jobs are made available to engage them. The devil always finds his workshop in idle hands. <laughs> and therefore, it is very, very important that we look at how to engage the youth to uh, ensure that these things are minimized. Once they have work, morning they are gone, evening they come back, they are tired, they sleep, they get up, the next day they are gone. It will be very difficult to be able to organize them for such uh, violence. And, uh, well, we pray that there will be peace uh, in the area. And we also know that there's also a strong police and military presence in the town of Bimbela, and patrols have since been intensified to enforce the curfew in the town and uh, the police um, are currently in the town trying to meet leaders of the two factions um, over the weekend episode of clashes to secure some level of ceasefire and also going there is interior minister set by the member of parliament for Damango, uh, Adam Spuntawakilwa and he is going there alongside the IGP David Asante appear to. Uh, th there's something that happened in Parliament or concerning Parliament, uh, concerning the ECOWAS Parliament. Are you aware of, of yes. something? Yes. Okay. Um, this is what happened. We're supposed to have been a swearing-in ceremony um, of the ECOWAS Parliament, okay? And um, apparently we went there with um, our officials or our representatives and then uh, um, there was a mix-up. Is it the representation or what really happened? You are an MP, so if you can share some Yeah, like uh, every four years, there is a, when a new parliament comes in, we elect people to represent us at the ECOWAS parliament. Because ECOWAS parliament, they also supervise the activities of uh, the ECOWAS force and other international uh, and West African regions. So we normally elect from both minority and majority using the ratios. So in this case, the ratio is 39 to 61. 61% 61 for the majority, 39% for the minority. So in this case, what happened is that there was uh, the MP for Suhum was in ECOWAS parliament the previous time. And he said his term hasn't ended. If it is every four years, he wanted to end his term. And therefore, he should be allowed to continue. That means to continue his term in ECOWAS parliament once his mandate has been renewed. However, the majority side think otherwise. They thought that it was enough, and they reconstituted their membership of five as to trade for minorities. And he was not part of it. And he wasn't part of it. And even before they left, he had made several complaints that he was going to attend it. So it is not something that is surprising. That came as a surprise. No, 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 no. He had made it known that he had, would attend. I would have wished the majority would have sorted it out not to get to that level. They didn't need to wait until uh, things of this nature happen at ECOWAS Parliament and Ghana's name is in the news for bad reasons. So what happened that day? Now, he wrote to the, the Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament that he had retained his seat and as such, he will be coming to finish his term. So he wrote to the ECOWAS speaker 
of Parliament, and therefore went to continue. And our delegation also went. So if you look at the majority side, there were six instead of five. Because they already have one in they attendance. Had, well, they had one in attendance. Yeah, the Whom they didn't there. elect in, in Parliament here. You see, but because he, he thought he was a continuer, he, he deserved to be there. So finally, they were six. And therefore, Honorable Mackin had to drop. And I respect him for that decision. That could have created chaos. But for me, I didn't think we needed to get to that level. If we had done our investigations well, we would have known that he had gone and would have known his status, whether we have the right for him not to be sworn in. Or once he's there and he has won his seat, it is automatic that he should finish it. This is, these are things I thought the majority should have done their own investigation. That once you are in ECOWAS parliament, you haven't ended your term and you have won your seat. Is it automatic that you must finish your term? And if it, if it becomes clear that yes, he has to finish his term, then you needed to have reshuffled your membership so that and included him, which they didn't do. And when he got there, he was sworn in. And therefore, if the ECOWAS parliament had listened that this is what government is, the government of Ghana, and therefore the parliament of Ghana is presenting, and that is superior to somebody who was already a member and hadn't completed his term, I don't think they would have sworn him in. So he had already been sworn in? Yes. And so, therefore... So they just had to add the uh, additional four people? Four people. And, and therefore, the minority aspect also added there. Yeah. We had no problem. So I, was, I thought this should have been, shouldn't have been a problem. problem. Yes. And I believe that in subsequent years, uh, we have to be due diligence. is very, very critical in, in trying to put together yes. this. So that resulted in the, perhaps uh, the misnomer the, or the miscommunication. Yeah, because we were more than the yes, required number. eight. And therefore, they will not swear us well, in if the that was parliament, is what is there? Because I know, I know the, the work of the ECOWAS parliament. But yeah. it, seems, it seems that you and PC find pride in it if you are elected, you are choosing not to be there. Yeah, one thing is an opportunity to enrich your CV, okay, okay. to broaden your knowledge. Instead of Ule in Ghana, now you are talking of West Africa. And it is very, very important. It opens you up. Three, you get the opportunity to interact with other members of parliament from ECOWAS. And that is very, very important. And it's good. I believe that uh, when the opportunity is given, it shouldn't be, one shouldn't decline. It's take advantage, go there, interact. You get to know how uh, the behavior of most of the countries what are the security situations in most of the countries? What are the economic opportunities that are there? And therefore, you can guide your country very well in taking advantage of those opportunities. What are the diplomatic relations between the various African countries? So it is good to, uh, when given the opportunity, to take advantage of. Well, we'll see how that goes. Now, let's move on to an issue. and. Uh, this one, I wish that uh, we speak to somebody also from the MPP as well. But it's got to do with um, the, uh, the when we have a new government in place, and of course, uh, they have to choose new DCs. And you have been uh, uh, an MC before. Is it yes. an MC? Yeah. Or a, DC? a DC. A DC. Okay. So um, the MPP uh, and the government is grappling with a certain difficulty now, in which um, they have the president has to make or make make choices for positions of uh, for the various MMDAs so municipal that's metropolitan municipal district assemblies yeah. those who will be heading them yeah. and apparently there's some difficulty supporters of the party at certain constituencies or certain regional areas seem to have with the choices that have been made and the lobbying perhaps that is uh, being done behind um, for some individuals to be chosen or appointed as uh, whether MCs or DCs, etc. Um, what do you make of the current standoff in the first place? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Appointment of DCs is the grassroots issue 
And as a result, it has a lot of challenges. A lot of challenges to the refund. This is a grassroots. You are coming to be with the grassroots direct impact of a, when the government takes any economic policy or so, you are there to ensure that there is direct impact to the people. So the people are very much interested in who becomes their DC. And as far as I know, the constituency level, they select three people submitted to the regional level for almost submission to the presidency. In some cases, even before they select the three people, they are given the opportunity, whoever applied, to come for interview. And through the interview, they will know those with the right quality and potentials and select three. So there are various ways you can do it. Either you allow them to come, the national was, the presidency will set up a team to go to the various regions, interview whoever applied to become a DC, and at, at the end of the day, they pick three for the president to decide. Or they do it the informal way. The constituency picks the submit it to the region. The region submit it to the presidency, and then they decide. And it is when this is done that lobbying comes into play. And in doing lobbying, there are various interests. It could be the beginning of the split of the district. Because if there are three people, definitely they will have various supporters. This one support that, this one support that, that one support that. So there's like the potential to split the district or the municipality into factions. And if not care is not taken, and you don't uh, select somebody mm -hmm. who can unite the various factions, then that is the beginning of problems. Within the catchment area. Within the Wherever catchment the, area. the person is supposed to be. Is yes. Supposed to be. And it's more serious. In a ruling party, you have a, an MP. Sometimes they will attach you to one side. Oh, he's supporting this person. Or he's supporting that person. Or he's supporting that person. And that could also be another serious problem for the MP if you are from the ruling party. Okay, let's say you're talking about if they have to make a choice for a certain area yes. in which the, rule, the, the, the ruling the MP, party has an MP there. Yes, they will, they will that definitely MP is always, they will always align you to somebody. They try to drag you into it. Okay. They will always assign, align you to, oh, you are supporting this person. But according to the Constitution, it's the prerogative of the president. Yeah, but the president must listen. The president, oh, is, really? not, the president is not at a grassroots. The president would like to select somebody or appoint somebody who will go and unite the constituency or the district and ensure that there's peace and tranquility. And therefore, because the president is not there, he cannot know all the dynamics that goes on. And therefore, extensive consultation is very important. The branch executives, chiefs, and religious bodies are very critical the regional level and the national level. So that at the end of the day, whoever they appoint will be able to work with all these interest groups. And it is very, very important. Now, if you are a DC and you align to yourself to the fact that, oh, this person is who has, elect, uh, who has helped me to become a district chief executive, and therefore he's the only one that you listen to then you have the beginning of your problem. Two, if you are being considered as a DC and appointed, and you think that it is the Flagstaff House that has appointed you and not the people, then that is the beginning of your problem. Because you will work. You are supposed to work with the people. So I like a DC who is being supported by the people at the grassroots. If you impose any DC on, a, on the people, then you have serious challenges. He cannot coordinate very well with them. And therefore, most often, he will always travel to Accra to let you feel like he's working. Meanwhile, he's not on the ground working. And if you don't have 
investigative issues whereby people go to find out the true uh, situation on the ground and you rely on what he comes to tell you at the plus staff house, you will be surprised at the end of the day. So it is very, very important. Two, the success of DC is leads to the success of the party. Yes. They are all interlinked. They are interlinked. If the DC is not able to coordinate very well with the constituency, and the people are not happy with how the DC is working, it affects the party in, at the end of the day. So coordination, picking somebody who can work with the grassroots is very, very critical. Well, the MP for Damango is commenting on this subject. We know it's, a, it's a, an issue that's confronting the MPP party, but it's also because he's been a DC before for Damango, and so he's, he's in a better position to also, uh, based on hindsight, comment on such things based on his experiences. But the new patriotic party has been responding to those concerns by the supporters, saying that they will not be blackmailed by party supporters at the grassroots, agitating for or against the appointment of certain individuals for the position of uh, MMDCs. And it comes even as a party considers proposed candidates to be appointed to represent the president in the various districts and municipalities. And, uh, well, the acting general secretary of the party, John Buedu, told a news conference, the process initiated by the party was meant to assist the president to make a choice and not to impose any of those individuals on him. And um, there's more in this report. There have so far been some agitations with regards to the process leading to appointment of MMDCEs. About two weeks ago, some members of an assembly within the Ododododio constituency registered their displeasure over the nomination of some persons to serve in the assembly. Earlier today, similar agitation was registered in the Tema East constituency where some MPP supporters told news conference the regional chairman of the party, Ishmael Ashite, is seeking to impose relative as MCE. Neno Foite is the party's Tema East chairman. We have made gains in the constituency, and this must be consolidated. That is why no individual with deep-seated and parochial interests must be allowed to derail what promises to be a smooth sail for the party and government. Let the selection process remain fair. The masses yearn to see a candidate who is truly baked, a per people's person of integrity, with good grasp of the terrain, who is equally skilled to connect the minds and the hearts of the citizenry. The regional chairman has, however, denied the accusation describing it as an untruth. Their complaint is that I'm imposing a relative of mine as the uh, uh, MCE of the man. Uh, in actual fact, I'm not the appointing authority. I don't appoint anybody. It is only the president who have to appoint the uh, Metropolitan Chief Executive. And therefore, it, it, it will be wrong for anybody to come out to say that I am putting somebody on them. For the party, the procedure is clear. Applications are to be put at the constituency level. John Buedu is the acting general secretary. The region had duly submitted all applications to the national party. We've sat down to go through. There were some regions and some constituencies that some few shortlisting were done. In some cases, 19 people applied. In some cases, 20 people applied. For us sitting here, it will be difficult to be able to go through these 19 people and take a decision. So we allow the various constituencies and the regions to do some shuffling. And that has been done. That is causing some few consternations on the ground. But that's how it is. It, it, it's about making sure that you get the best for the party. The acting general secretary also said, notice that the president will not be influenced by such agitations. If there is any problem that anybody raises, uh, our doors are open, we are ready to listen to it. I don't have interest in a particular district or particular municipality. My interest is the new patriotic party, and that is all. And that one, if I, we take the decision, it is a decision that has been taken by the party, and we are going to defend. We are not going to be allow ourselves to be blackmailed by annoyance and demonstration. We are not going to allow that. We will make sure that 
everything that is done is done in the interest of the party and party people must understand that this is the position the party it appears is bent on relying on the process of application going forward what will be key is whether the call on party faithful to remain calm will restore calm indeed and in that report was John Buedo, the General Secretary of uh, the MPP. And uh, joining us is Emmanuel Kwesi Jimfi. And Kwesi Jimfi is a member of parliament for Dotobri. And thanks for joining me. He's the first time on the show. Yeah, yeah. But um, w w what do you make of the current wranglings we have between your party uh, at the grassroots level, your supporters, and then at the top, blaming the national executives or the regional executives for impositions of candidates? Wow, this is a very uh, challenging question. Yes, I know. Uh, but let me just say uh, happy Valentine to everybody. Uh, today is uh, uh, Valentine's Day, and this month is a month of love, and you can only express love when you share. So it's not sharing between just um, man and woman, but to everybody. To everybody. Somebody, everybody that you love. Everybody that you know, love. Very like well. Uh, so that is a uh, very wonderful. <laughs> Ghana and Valentine. Yes. And again, uh, this is my first time as on the you show. said on the mm. show. Yes. This will continue so far as our democracy will, will, will continue to. It, it is not just that people are agitating. It is a matter that no matter what it is, it will, it, it will come up. Once you have one power, we need to fill and occupy all those uh, positions, especially the metropolitan municipal district executive's position. And no, no party or no government will have it easy. In my constituency or district alone, Amancia Central, we have more than 11 people. Your, con your district where your constituency is located is yes, Amancia Central. Amancia Central. It's, it's where one did you do the Galamse mining? Oh, very. Yes, it's a very... I okay. don't know. You will not have time to talk about it. No, no, no. We're not talking Galamse. I yeah, just wanted yeah, to situate it's, it's 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 well. A, it's a, a, a eminence at, mm. the, at, the, at that particular thing. But what I'm saying is that the power to appoint DCs rest with the president. People will apply for the position. And in some cases, more than 20 people have applied. So it becomes... For one position? Yes, yes. More other, than 20 people? Other the municipal chief executives or the district chief executives. Uh, for the metropolitan chief executives, uh, they are not much, you know. But for the district levels, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole lot. And if you are not able to manage and manage it well, it will affect the fortunes of the party. Because I believe in decentralization. That is the best way to bring development to the local people, the grassroots. And so um, I, uh, yesterday, I had my general secretary, the acting general secretary and the organizer of the party uh, with, with that press conference. And for me, I will ask my people to be very calm very patient. Definitely, we, all of us cannot occupy the, the, the district uh, uh, the, chief, executive the, the chief executive positions. One person will be definitely be appointed to uh, occupy that position. So um, as, as part of government, not really with the executive, but as a member of parliament and my party in power, uh, I will ask that we should all listen to the general secretary and the party. The power rests with the president. If uh, yesterday we were at the Frank Star House, and uh, there are modalities for selecting the people from the district level to the region, and so what did they do? The they applied. Yes, we have to definitely. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a public uh, office position. So you apply. You, you apply to, to who? You, you apply to the president. He is going to make the appointment. But because so many people are applying, you need to, I mean, do some kind of vetting before you maybe have about three, four people presented to the president for he also to peruse through their CVs, their competence. And make a selection. And, and make a selection. 
So um, it's going to be tough for the president. Uh, it's, it's not an easy exercise. But I will plead with my uh, party people. Uh, and you see, these appointments are it's, it's political. They represent the president at the district level. So it's much more political. Mm. So they and are small presidents? Yeah, they're, they're, small yeah presidents. they're small presidents. <laughs> and they, they are very powerful. Okay, since you have been at DCA before, I would want to perhaps uh, situate your, your next answer to a position where the president has found himself winning overwhelmingly. And arguably, on the back of a lot of pressure. So in this instance, who advises him who to choose and who not to choose? And what if his choice doesn't, is not res resonating Sit well with the people? Yes. What does he do as president? Yeah, thank Maybe you he's very worked much. with somebody before. Uh, uh, he feels that this guy is appropriate, but you have people, party people, or perhaps the district people coming to make agitations. Yeah, thank you. It's not uh, when you look at the position of DC, it's not about who you like. <laughs> Just like that? No. It's about who can work with the people to ensure that the party continues to remain in power. That is what I said. The grassroots is very, very important. That is the basis of the party. That's the foundation of the party. So if you let, you let somebody that you like, which the people don't like, his actions will be blamed on you, the president. They've never blamed the anybody for the worst performance of ADC. They always blame the president, change him. The president must change this person. So it is very, very important. If you're an MP and you involve yourself so much and get somebody uh, appointed, his inactions will first of all be blamed on you and then to the president. So- That is if, it, if you physically Sure. If you prove beyond reasonable doubt mm, that, oh, I, like so, I have this person to become DC, the people know that, oh, it is honorable he who has made sure that this person was made DC. Meanwhile, we don't like him. You will be the first exit then before the president. Because anybody you elect as, D, as a DC must coordinate with the people. The, he must be able to carry the people along in unity and in peace. I see. And you must not only see that it's the president who matters so much to me. Your, your being there for long will depend on how your people appreciate your work. If they appreciate your work very well and the president even want to, to dismiss you, they will resist vehemently. So they should be your support base. And whoever you elect, to get the support of the people is critical. It's not about, oh, this person, I know him, I like him so much. Because the party is so wide. And you can do a selection or an appointment before you select somebody and appoint the person. You have various people giving you information. The security agencies will give you information. But if you want to get the information, just get an, somebody who the people don't know who people don't respect, an ordinary person, to just visit the various communities, if it is a play with several communities. You get the views from there. And that will inform you to a greater extent. Well, Emmanuel. Just, 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 to, okay. add, just mm -hmm. to add to this. You, you see, it is not just political issue at the district level. It's also developmental. So, Looking at how you can get a somebody who can work well with the people, you should also look at the competence of that particular individual, whether he can deliver the, 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 the goals, the objectives of the party or the government in power. So that's why I said it's very challenging, because you cannot just say this person is cool with the people and that it is, it is enough. You should also go ahead and also find out whether that person is a leader and competent. is a manager. A man, I mean, a team, a, team, a, team, a team player and all that. Mm. So um, party people will come. Sometimes you, 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 tr you believe in yourself that this is a true loyal party person. But you look at how he can also 
deliver because now we have we are getting to full decentralization where we have most of the decentralized departments education agriculture all these areas they are coming to work under this particular person you are going to appoint the dc so we need to be very careful in appointing somebody to represent you it's, as a, it's an interesting point you make yes, yes. because on the other side let, let mm -hmm. me come Development goes with coordination. Uh, I get in my point. Coordination. If the people don't appreciate development, irrespective of whatever you do, if the people are not willing to support you to develop, for example, let's they take can an give instance. you problems. You can build all bridges, and the people say they don't want. Like yes. in the last election, yeah. you build infrastructure, and they said they don't want it. You see, it's, it's not something a replica yes, of something like that. You must coordinate with the people. One, identify the development that the people need is based on coordination. What if the people, what they need is not the right thing that they need? <laughs> no, what I mean... The people yeah. want gutter, but you the see, gutter is not what they need. That is, that is when you don't coordinate very well. Identify the needs of the people is when you get closer. For example, as a DC, I always visit my communities. I sit with them, we eat. My first point of visit, oh, what do you think you you need to be able, whatever they mention, in some of the community, there were certain needs which will, uh, what will I say, which has multiplier effect, whatever they are telling you, but they never mention it. But as you get closer to them, you'll get to know. You get to know that now, if I solve this problem, all the problems they are talking about would be solved. You mean one developmental challenge if solved could have trickling Could have trickling effect. Okay. So it has a multiplier effect. And it is very, very important. First is acceptance of the people. If you go and build a school for the people, you don't respect the people, you think that they are second class citizens, you can build a machine. You will not appreciate like it. it. And, and if they don't it. appreciate it, it is cost 90. Because at the end of the day, politically, if development cannot translate to vote for you, <laughs> then you have a challenge in getting the right person for the people to appreciate that development. Because if you get the right person to get the people to appreciate the development, then you'll get more votes. Two, on this case, I believe that in Ghana at this moment, most of those who have applied have gotten the basic qualification. Most of them. Mm -hmm. I'm saying most. Degree. At least they've got the basic so uh, that one, qualification. Yeah, That's what I'm <laughs> However, you need somebody who has the technical know-how, not only technical. Leadership is not about doing development. Oh, I did development studies. And therefore, <laughs> leadership goes beyond. Leadership is about human touch. Getting the people to it's do what... Basic of what you know. Getting the, no, not getting the people to do what ordinarily they, they wouldn't have done. So in that case, the book knowledge alone is not enough. What about party knowledge? Party knowledge, if you implement it at the grassroots, you scatter the party. Because party... But, but if, I have, you, if you I have the party at hand, people know me, I coordinate all with the yeah, party people. The party I can't be a one. good DC. When you become a DC, you must reach out to many more. Because the party must grow. So if you have 10 people in a... Cons let's assume 10 people... And these MPP people, they said, oh, you are the one, the one. Yes, you have come. You shouldn't just think that these are the 10 people and myself. Because the party must grow. And reaching out and doing, a see, uh, uh, doing it in a manner for the people to see you not to be biased is very important. As an DC, as an MP, I've never gone to a, cons a, a, a community and said, oh, I'm meeting NDC people. No. I meet the whole community including the chief, we discuss, we agree, then I implement. I see. Now, when it comes to primaries, the people also know that this is a party matter issue. So in that case, if I go to meet my party people, the people know that, oh, it's because of the primary that he has come to meet his people. So there are seasons when you are meeting your party people as a DC or in it, the people will understand. So it is... And joining us on the line is Joe Jackson. And Mr. Joe Jackson is a political commentator. A very good morning to you. Good to have you again online. 
And I know that appropriately, um, that this seemingly misunderstanding between the grassroots of the MPP and uh, the top hierarchy of the party, as well as the presidency, over the choice of who become the heads of the various MMDAs is, is, is a very thorny issue. How could this be ameliorated in a certain way in which um, similarly we have that kind of consensus built between the two parties? All right, good, mor good morning to all your listeners, and it's good to be on your show again. Good. Listen, it's, it's a balancing act. The president has to find someone who is competent to pursue the agenda. I know that a lot of we've been talking about a lot of slogans revolve around this, etc. So this, uh, the, the president is in a position where his around uh, going down to the district level. Now, that means that he must appoint people who identify with his vision and can pursue that vision. But at the same time, this, uh, as a DC or MC, you're not work working in isolation. You've got stakeholders. So he's got to be able to um, reach out to different stakeholders. But you've also got to bear in mind that sometimes a district is not made up of a homogeneous group. So uh, the, the, apart from the challenges of the uh, NDC versus NPP, which, which is always there as a local government, even though it is not supposed to be as pronounced as it is, there's also the challenge of different groups, where sometimes they are indigenous. Sometimes there are people who migrated from another area, but are still in that district, still sometimes even hold a majority and still matter. So it's a balancing act, and it's not going to be simple. But we have to believe that the, 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 the president will, will take all these things into consideration. But there's no easy way out. And I yeah. think that to some extent, the people who are in a district, they must, at a certain level, trust in the, the presidency yeah, when he sends someone to them. And unless they have really good reason, they shouldn't reject him out of the or her out of uh, uh, saying that he's not a grassroots person. The issue is not whether you're a grassroots person or not. The issue is, can you deliver? Because if you don't deliver, the president will be out. Mm. But uh, why doesn't the president also see reason in the fact that it's the very grassroots people, so to, so to speak, they brought you into power. So if they want some share of the national cake by... Uh, you appointing somebody they like, that looks more appropriate to me uh, in rather continuing whatever legacy it is that you may have chalked in the previous election that may have led you into power. But you see, again, your language itself uh, uh, betrays a certain bias, which has me worried. The fact is you people shouldn't be seeking a share of the national state. They should be seeking development in their area and believe that their development, once you get into the point where they are seeking a share of nationality, then we are going to go back into the same old uh, uh, cycle of events where pointed their interest, share whatever they believe is the national cake amongst the people that they believe should be beneficiaries. And in four years, there's no development, and they will throw out the government. So, you know, it cannot be, and it should not be, about mm -hmm. sharing, uh, uh, we are grassroots, and this is our mm -hmm. time to share the national take. It cannot be. And that sort of attitude should be summed up. Otherwise, all of us are in trouble. Mm. Well, it's an interesting comment you make, especially when we know that the former president, uh, that is the, the NDC government led by John Dramani Mahama, faced similar challenges in the appointment of such people. And even to the point of who becomes a presiding member, even though it's not supposed to become a politically tagged issue, uh, became an issue of uh, MPP and NDC in most of those notable areas. How do the political heads, i.e. the president and the regional heads, etc., uh, dissociate themselves from, from such wranglings when they come up? You know, in, an, in, a, in a sense, you're not going to be able to dissociate yourself. I think that the people who are, the, uh, uh, the president has several people in position who should help negotiate this uh, in field. The, uh, for the party, there are, um, there's a chairman. There's a, uh, there's a chairman, a regional chairman, a constituency chairman, 
whatever, which should help negotiate this minefield. Uh, at the regional level, there's a regional minister. There are other people who should help negotiate this minefield. But ultimately, it should be negotiated. It cannot, you cannot, if the president decides to lay down the law and say, I am the person, so I appoint this, we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, so what it is is that it must be negotiated. And so it, it, it's a thorny issue. But if we say we believe in the principle of decentralization, then it's a negotiation that must take place. Because the key to this country is to lie in the district. It cannot lie in the center. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Joe Jackson, a political commentator. But, Emmanuel, because you're MPP, let me ask you this. And I think also we'll go to you, because you immediately your party had been just out of government. Emmanuel, we have people who didn't campaign. They, didn't, they are from nowhere. They may have been part of the election in some way. They never contributed to the party in any way, never contributed to the district in any way, never contributed to the efforts uh, of, the, of the whole in any way in a certain area. But, uh, well, e election is pronounced, a leader is chosen as elect. On the 10th of December, they come up. And then they become very forceful by 7th of January the next year. Roland, it is, it is a bare truth that this exercise is not an easy one. Jackson just said. For me, if you ask me for a, a set of uh, criteria to appoint or nominate people to be MMDCs, I will first look for competence. I will, second, I will look for somebody who share the vision of the president and the government and the party, then you get a lawyer party person. You see, for me, if you are able to operationalize the decentralization very well, mm -hmm. that is where you will see massive development. Even though the party, the president wants to be in power, so you should get a party person to prosecute the agenda of the party. But it should not be all political, not all elections. But development is key. You see, in, in appointing, in appointing uh, uh, people to manage district level uh, 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 positions, for the president not to be embarrassed, in quote, whereby you nominate somebody and he is presented to the assembly and his nomination yeah, I mean, becomes a problem. I mean, people, I mean, you, you, you know what happens. So first, there should be a serious consultation with the party, with the major stakeholders like the traditional authorities. <laughs> you see, this is a, it's a very comprehensive exercise. And if it is not well executed, that is where, at the end, you see... Um, Can I say that then you, your party perhaps just won the election and perhaps is not ready uh, to... Uh, or did not take into account some of these things? No, I mean, we are well versed with these issues. You and, are? And there's, there's a committee at the presidency, who, I mean, which is working but on this. But that's the problem. The committee so, is at the presidency. No, so, the so, 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 the no. so what is happening is that the constituency level, the constituency level, the party, they should get people to present to the region, and the region will also present them to the national, and the national will present them to the committee that we are talking about. Yeah, th thank you very much. That is what I'm saying. It doesn't necessarily mean that if 20 people applied in a district, it is the 20 names that has come to the national level. No. They always sort out and pick three. Out of the three, that is where you test competence, you test all those things. And if it is properly done at the constituency level, if they pick somebody that has an issue, they, it, will always pop, it will always pop up that you read to, read to investigate. And therefore, by the time it gets to the national level, a lot of the other things might have. I'm not saying that those they have rejected are not. Sometimes you realize campaign. that they are very, very competent. But too, it happens that people will wait Last minute, they show up. And uh, when the party wins, they are, more, they are so strong. 
So they become active than even those who had campaigned seriously for the party. And it happens. It happens. It's normal. Before I became the, DC, the it happened. Comes that people waited. At the first, uh, after the 7th December, they waited. Then 28th December, first round. <laughs> then when it was left with time, then and now, now they know that the, this, the they jump in. <laughs> and after the elections, they behave as if they worked throughout for the party to come to power. Loyalty is very critical. Loyalty is critical. Understanding the party ideology is also critical. If you don't understand the ideology, you can bring about the development, but you can't trace that, translate that ideology into it. So it is very, very important. And those things come up, and it's very, very important to identify those people and get them out. The comments of the General Secretary of the NPP, we will not be blackmailed. We will not, uh, that, just, that sort of language, does it resonate with the grassroots? I believe that he should have calmed down next. SI patient, we are taking due diligence to come up with uh, a candidate that both that is acceptable to the district, to the regional, and to the national. So come. That is how I would have come, gone about it. But not to say we won't be blackmailed. That means that when you are taking your decision, irrespective of what people say, you will not even bother to. But when people say certain things, it's good to look at it. If you've looked at something, and after you have looked at this, people raise issues, look back and make sure that what you have seen the first time is still the same thing. So that is the way I would have uh, gone about it. Yeah, Roland, behind the scenes, it looks as if people are having different information about the process. Mm. So, so That's why I, they are reacting the way they are. I, I think so. I think so. So for me... For me, whilst the party is trying to be very transparent in this process, uh, you should uh, calm down lips. Um, it's quite important. Um, now he came out to tell what the party is doing in terms of selecting the, uh, these uh, nominees. And uh, I believe that um, from now onwards, uh, because when he said they will not sit down to be blackmailed by the party or by other people, um, it, 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 possibly there is something they've heard. Other maybe people are saying that they are putting their uh, their right hand men or I mean something. So they, they, they and they know what they are doing is the right thing you should do from the constituency to the regions and to the headquarters before even going to the presidency for that particular committee. And what that committee is, I think, chaired by uh, Mark Manu Peter, uh, the, the, the campaign uh, manager. And I think Mike uh, uh, understands the party uh, work very well. He understands the, the, the work of government. And for me, you won't all be happy. That is one thing we need to be uh, aware of. I mean, because maybe 10 people are, are applying for one position. You cannot, uh, I mean, get all of them the same. Deal. But what I would say is that, I mean, when you win power, there are so many opportunities. If you want to say you've worked for the party, there are so many, more than 6,000 appointments by the president. And how how that is this is how powerful the president of the republic is so we should all become what towards delivering i mean the the, the best of our uh, uh, promises to the people and i know maybe you'll be talking about the free shs i mean these are some of the things we need to do when the one million one constituency issue these are all going to generate a whole lot of jobs and opportunities for people. So we, I think we need to be uh, All very right. calm we have, for we, now. We have, you know, because process. you didn't come early, so we had already talked about the free SHS. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, well, maybe we if have. you can give me some small Oh, oh you want to make some political yes. capital? If, if, if you, you make some politics, I'll have to. No, I won't. Okay. No, 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 no. Definitely. I know, okay. so, I know you did not do politics with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know you. Yeah. But I'm not, seriously, it's something that I'm happy. Well, the free free things. Yes. Hey, no, 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 no. The president's it's, announcement. It's, it's not the free. Too many free, free things. Free free education. Okay. 
it is educating that I'm interested. I mean, I I, school, I schooled I, people Roland, are worried. Roland, Roland, I schooled at the village. There was no light there. I wasn't the best in my class, and was not the last. There were people who then were. Then you were like me, so you oh, and I. I possibly. You're saying. Possibly. Those guys who were the best students in my class in the village. You go to the village now. You see them. You 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 you, you become sad. I was maybe fortunate because my father is a ex police officer. He went to the village to do commercial farming. So he was able to pay for my school fees. But those good students who were with me, and because they, 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 they didn't get the opportunity to further the education, if you go and meet them, I ask myself, so if my father was not able to pay my fees, I would have been the same person. So for me, for me, let us see education as a right to everybody. Everybody should get education, and not just education, quality education. And you, you have been talking about quality education, you've been talking about infrastructure, but there is one key issue, affordability. And this is how this free SHS fits into the, 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 the system. Uh, for me, and since 2008, you know, the party and the president, His Excellency Nanadu Danko Kukwadu, has been very consistent with this particular promise to Ghanaians that if we can do anything for Ghana, let everybody be educated. And to, to eradicate or to reduce poverty to the barest minimum, the key education. is education. And I that agree. is what we need to That's do. my quote for the money. Yes. Yeah, thank you. It's yeah. true. But if you want everybody to be educated, it's not just free education. Why? Access is very important. I indicated it here. I that about if you make it free, mm -hmm. but the access is not there, there will be many more people who take advantage. And I made it clear that what President Mama has left in terms of the SHS construction, I hope that President Nana Akufuado will continue with it vis-a-vis -vis the free. If not, so many more people will be left out. And I also indicated that President Mama has started with the free education, but progressively, as mm -hmm. <laughs> stated in the Constitution. As we speak, some of the SHS students are benefiting from the free SHS that he has started with. He has come with total free. That is good. And as I indicated earlier, we also want to ensure that for quality to be achieved, prompt payment should be very key. Because if you say you pay and school starts, no money is coming, the student have to go back home and then get back later, you, you, then you, you the concept of I, free I, I, will I, become a very big challenge. Uh, Roland, uh, just a short one, just a short one. You understand? Um, um, now, as you, I speak. You know, I came to Parliament 2005, right? My priority since then has been to make education the best in the constituency. So, have you I, achieved I, that? For me, I've gone very far. Every year, every year from the funds that are allocated to members of parliament, like the common fund, the GET fund. Most yes, I, I spent not less than 60 to 80,000, which is the 800 million, 600 million on education. If That's education, only one car. Oh, I, I understand it. But if you look at the resources that are given to members of parliament, how much is it? So if you spend that chunk, on education. It we means how you Our time is up. Yeah, if it comes to education, uh, let me just, I just want to My good friend a, Adams Mutawakiri is a member of parliament for Damango. Mm. And also, we have had in the studio um, Akwesi, uh, Emmanuel Akwesi, and thanks for joining me for the show. And uh, he's uh, a first time on the show. I hope to have you again. I love your personality, and I'm sure that we can do great things together. He's a member of parliament for Odotobri. I'm also a secret admirer of you. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I think <laughs>